Hello and welcome to this first lesson within a series of 21 that cover the developer skills needed to work with Sage CRM. My name is Jeff Richards and I'm part of the development team in Dublin and I happen to look after the creation of training resources that cover the programming interfaces, customization capabilities and technical features of Sage CRM. We're going to be taking a comprehensive survey of Sage CRM during these lessons and I hope you enjoy them as much as I've enjoyed the refreshing and editing of these. Let's acknowledge a reality of working with Sage CRM. Most people who do Sage CRM development are not coders by background. Some of us have been through IT courses at university or college and are very much focused on coding development. But most people are not experts in coding, but instead have expertise in other areas, such as the installation and configuration of accounting systems. And you may well have solid skills in analysis and business consultancy that allow customer needs to be fully understood. I think the majority of business partners typically also have to perform multiple day-to-day -day roles. You may find yourself creating a demo one day, installing CRM the next, and then find yourself logging a support call the day after. This course has been designed in modules to allow you to decide which are the ones that you need to attend to get the job done. The training is also designed to faci facilitate the integration of third-party products with Sage CRM. Sage CRM is a very extendable product. There really isn't a vertical industry to which Sage CRM has not been applied, whether that's uh, loan management, legal practice management, project management, job management, yacht sales or cemetery management. Someone has developed an, ex an extension to support that industry. And Sage wants partners to extend the product. We should be making this as easy as possible. So everything that we do should help rather than hinder you in your efforts to create components that extend the reach of the core product. As I said, this is the first of 21 lessons. Some of the less technical topics may well be of interest to system administrators and analysts. Details of courses and recordings from previous training sessions can also be found in the e-learning area of the Sage CRM community. We are now focused on integration with Sage Business Management Solutions and it's full of clear examples on how to customise and extend the sales, marketing and service modules. All the supporting material and script examples have been or are being updated and added to the community. And the training cycle, in whole or in part, is relevant for all developer program staff, pre-sales support and implementation consultants. We've been working very closely with each of the Sage country company teams, country teams. The application is open. There are only a few areas of the product to which we are not given complete control. And you have a choice, really, on, on what are the APIs and development tools that you can use. And these range from internal configuration using metadata and the run block action. And that's essential for doing anything with mobile, and that's phone and tablet interface. And the RESTful S-Data interface. We'll be discussing the SOAP Web Services interface. Uh, we'll be discussing the .NET API. Uh, you've got uh, the COM variants. And we'll be looking at the differences between um, table level scripts and ASP pages later on during the course. We have, of course, a very powerful tool in the case of the client side API. And we have a database that is very open. You can have a data model that is, is open and you can see within that uh, the structures and we describe and provide resources to help you understand all of the physical changes that take place between uh, one release and the next release. And you can see the limited use as well that uh, we make of triggers and stored procedures with inside the product. Now, those of you who have already been working with CRM know that the EWA DLL is the key element for most of the main APIs and uh, most of the application programming interfaces. The classic ASP pages and the .NET API both interact with the EWA DLL. The ASP scripting pages use COM objects, that's component object model, that are exposed through the Windows registry when Sage CRM is installed. 
And this allows you to program and write extensions to Sage CRM that use CRM's own objects to draw screens and fields and to insert and update data. That usage of COM also includes the self-service API as it's based on the same scripting technology. The .NET API uses COM interop to allow Sage CRM's COM objects to be used in conjunction with .NET objects. And programmers can use .NET languages like C Sharp and tools like Visual Studio to write sophisticated extensions to Sage CRM. But these are all ultimately interacting with the eWare DLL. The different APIs are going to be discussed in some of the letters lessons that come on after this one, and we'll be explaining the way in which Sage CRM can be extended by developers. Way back. Sage CRM7 saw the start of an evolution to a new product architecture and the move away from reliance on the eWare DLL. Now I've extended the diagram uh, that, I, you, that you can see shown here to illustrate how CRM has moved to this hybrid architecture that mixes Java technology with the existing eWare.DLL design. These supporting technologies include the Apache Tomcat web server uh, servlet as uh, Spring Framework um, Hibernate. Now, Tomcat is developed by the Apache Software Foundation, and it provides an ideal Java HTTP web server environment in which Java, Java code can run. Now, it's a very simple and robust web server, and it allows web applications written in Java to extend the features of Sage CRM. Um, if you're a system administrator, then you're likely to have become aware of Tomcat, as it is mentioned sometimes in the system messages. The Spring Framework is used by the developers who create Sage CRM to provide a structure for new features. It allows the use of industry standard code libraries that simplify the development process and speed up the delivery of additional functions. The use of that framework, though, is completely invisible to all users, including anyone wanting to extend the product using Sage CRM's APIs. Hibernate, or the Hibernate Object Relational Mapping, provides the developers who create Sage CRM a way of mapping the object-oriented Java code with the underlying relational database. Hibernate enables Sage CRM to maintain the CRM metadata in memory so that it is database independent and fully managed and also maps Java data types to SQL data types and provides data query and retrieval facilities. The use of Hibernate is completely invisible to all users, including our usage of uh, the APIs. It's the Tomcat web app uh, that uses JDBC to interact with the underlying database. Now in Sage CRM 2017 there are a large number of features that are provided that are based on this Java-based technology, and that's everything from data import and export through to uh, where you've got the document drop panels through to the server-side mail merge, and you've also got other features such as the uh, printing to PDF, as well as uh, the enablement of uh, features like the SData Ajax features within the client-side API, all based ultimately on the Java technology. Now, we'll be looking all the way through the course at um, all of the different APIs. But I want to mention just now the idea of the web service interfaces that are provided. Because we will be looking at the classic SOAP web services. Um, we'll find that our SOAP WSDL is strongly typed. And the course is... As I write at the beginning of the of this session, mentioned that the course is reality based. So I'm going to discuss challenges like schema discovery and challenges around exposing metadata and other services, and the fact that the SOAP interface is peculiar to Sage CRM. Although SOAP itself may be a standard, the objects and methods described within it are unlike the way in which other Sage BMS or third-party systems may describe their objects. SData 
on the other hand, provides a much more uh, common way across SAGE of describing new objects and discovering discovering those. And we'll see that the uh, SData 2.0 provides a very flexible way of handling all sorts of data. The new calendar features are using uh, SData 2.0, that's full CRUD, that, that offers full CRUD. And when we do discuss any coding point within these sessions, then the examples of the code and the business use to which it can be put will be provided through the availability of components. So I'm going to I'm going to be providing you with a library of components that you can download from the partner community. Now, my colleagues in the documentation team, so please bookmark help.sagecrm.com. Now, we've come to the end of the session now. I hope our time together has given you some useful understanding about what's going to be covered in this series of developer training lessons. So please do look at the other edu educational material that we've created. There are other video in introductions to help uh, users find their way around SageCRM and technical lessons that explain the architecture and technology and more.